This video is proudly sponsored by DraftKings. We're nearing the big game, you know. Even if you aren't a follower of football, it's like going to Christmas or Easter service. Everyone watches it. You might be a casual, but think about the depraved of us. We desire more out of our football picks. And that's where DraftKings Sportsbook comes in. First of all, new customers to DraftKings can bet just $5 and receive 200 bucks in bonus bets instantly. But suppose I wanted to experiment in some same-game parlays. Suppose I were to do something entirely ridiculous and a total long shot. Good news for me, I can be safe from my own idiocy with the no-sweat bet. I'd get a bonus bet if my haphazardly rushed parlay doesn't hit. But hopefully you'll be smarter than me by doing the following. To start, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. When you do so, use the promo code UTREE to take advantage of these attractive offers. The only way to partake in this daring landscape is with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NFL. And while you enjoy the big game coming up, please remember to gamble responsibly. <laughs> January football is a spectacle where heroes and legends are forged in the cold while the defeated drift away in an unforgiving win. Even when blowouts are the name of the game, we yearn for classics that will live on in our hearts. Or nightmares. In Buffalo, two heavyweights enter the frozen tundra to square off for such superiority again. On one end, the Kansas City Chiefs. Their hopes of title retention are still intact, albeit lacking hands to catch anything that drops from the air. A team being led by its defense. A rock-solid unit that stifles most attacks in their tracks. Be it by quality scheming or the power of their front four. They also have impressive talent on offense. Well, if they don't develop stone hands at the most inopportune times. There's a reason why this is Patrick Mahomes' first road playoff game in the AFC. And it isn't due to Taylor Swift watching from the press box. Although her vibes could have thrown off Miami last week. The Dolphins were dead men walking anyway. Now they must travel to an environment more harsh than the one they faced last week. Circling the team wagons come the Buffalo Bills, a franchise desperate to break through the imposed second best ceiling. If they can do that, their upside is enormous. The ability is there to do so, especially with Josh Allen at peak ability, but they keep running into obstacles. Underachieving injuries on defense, a searing hot seat for Sean McDermott and Stefan digging his way out of the organization. Or is that the city of Buffalo digging their way out of another snowstorm? No matter the cost, everyone must go into the pit. They got all but a bye week against Pittsburgh in the wildcard round. You know, the whole they played hard thing, but Buffalo wasn't interested in pulling a Dallas. They need revenge. We know what happened against these teams a few years ago. The shootout at Arrowhead. 13 seconds. The scapegoat known as the coin. They all must vanquish. Bill's got a taste of glory in the regular season. Kadarius mm. Tony happened. And then the Chiefs just had one massive temper tantrum. The Bills haven't lost since that game. Decades of pain to be exercised. And on a cold Sunday night at Highmark Stadium, Bills Mafia will unleash their war cry. It's a guttural sound that instills fear in their enemies. Sounds a lot like bloodlust. Sometimes involves fire. They yearn for flesh. Will the gods give them this feast? It will only be unraveled as the home team receives ball first. It will begin with a perilous fumble, but is wisely batted out of bounds by Dalton Kincaid to prevent further damage. Just a 10-yard penalty that forced Buffalo into a bye. But Josh Allen isn't one for standing idly. He's transforming into fire god form. Roping up backwards lateral that might not have been backwards gets them a fourth and one. And the bold Allen converts it as the stadium comes alive. The Bills chipping away at the Chiefs' defense. Mauling their front seven for steady, consistent gains all the way to the red zone. And then it's just batted at the line and stalls out. A field goal's not optimal, but it forces Kansas City to respond in kind. There's only one problem. The Bills are out of linebackers. Matt Milano and Terrell Bernard are out. And it's showing in how Mahomes and company are dicing them up to start. However, the defense bends but doesn't break. Forcing Kansas City to a field goal in the great game of chess. We just assumed the kick was good. The camera angle was suboptimal. Continue more relentless crushing of the Chiefs' defense with methodical offense. It's not anything special they're doing, simply well-executed fundamentals and straight up beating their opponent to a pulp in the trenches. Besting their opponent in both technique and willpower. The textbook example of quality play. Rewarding those that perform well with a seamless touchdown. All of Buffalo is about to burst at the seams. Victory is a possibility now. About 95% of the football world desires it for the Bills. 
But KC won't go down quietly into the night. They will do everything they can to make Buffalo's life a living hell, but can they score touchdowns? That's the question. And on this drive, they cannot. It forces another field goal. Buffalo can forge ahead to take a two-score advantage. Yet they can't. It's the first fun of the day for either side. And you know what that means for Kansas City. A punishing drive because the Bills are injured to hell on defense. This time, though, it's a broken coverage leaving Travis Kelsey wide open in the end zone. Leading us to the sight we all want to see on our television. Jason Kelsey. This is peak man. By God, what a specimen. Oh, if I were a switch hitter, the things I would let that man do to me. Did I say that out loud? Time for another rumbling of the wagons in Buffalo. The spirit of Peppa Pig fuels them in their quest. Mostly because they threw her into the pit before the game. In related news, pork sandwiches are plentiful at Highmark Stadium. They will feast on them like the Bills are feasting on this paper tiger of the Chiefs front seven. This unit was supposed to be good. They're all but bully balling them. Bullets to the head all the way to the end zone and a retaking of the lead. And that alone will be enough to take us to halftime. The smell of blood isn't just in the air, it's being intravenously absorbed by every Bills fan in attendance. An orgy of destruction and mayhem. The burning of Alexandria and all the knowledge within. As has always been written. How will the Chiefs respond in the second half? MVS can catch a football? I thought that was deemed illegal in week 17. Patrick Mahomes will do the rest. I don't care if he led them on the touchdown drive, I'm still in shock that MVS didn't drop the damn pigskin. Oh no. Bills, you have to keep pushing the offensive attack if this is the case. There's no Kadarius Tony to bail you out this time. Thank the gods that it's still coming to a head. The rule of the game, score touchdowns. Getting down to a goal to go area, yet seemingly stalling out. Two plays stuffed at the line, followed by a delay of game penalty. Buffalo needs a bailout in the worst way. Holy shit. Jesus Christ, piss missile right into their soft underbelly. Jerry Sneed hadn't given up a touchdown all year and that happens? This is the kind of magic that Buffalo needs to overcome their demons. And this place is exploding in all but the literal sense. The only thing that can quell this madness... Another catch by MVS? Okay, script writers, this is getting quite ridiculous. You can stop with the bullshit now. It's just hit the fourth quarter and MVS has two big receptions? Oh god. The Chiefs have the lead again. And the Bills got three and outed. Now as long as they don't do anything stupid, like fake a punt at their own th- Really? A fake punt to Damar Hamlin? Earth to Sean McDermott. There's aggressive and then there's being aggressively stupid. That decision may have left the team legally dead on the damn field. With Isaiah Pacheco pushing the Chiefs near the goal line, they can bury them here. Here's the toss. It's Hardman. And Hardman is stopped just short. Hey, the ball went through the end zone. Oh my gosh. Pacheco's been gashing this team to dust and you're running exotic plays to McCole Hardman? He's had the ball twice today. And he's fucked the ball the same number of times. This one for a touchback in Bills first down, the greatest defensive advantage in the game today. It's getting nerfed in the offseason because of this, isn't it? God forbid the defense is a perk in the modern game. The Bills tried to take advantage of it, but like this pass by Josh Allen to Trent Sherfield, it's not corralled in time and they're forced to punt it away. Their defense is going to have to hold. And they do for a three and out. Ooh, Buffalo's not gonna like this at all. A penalty that may not have been a penalty yet gives the Chiefs a first down. Was the ball even out of Mahomes' hand at the time of contact? They're not beating the rigging allegations, NFL. Be thankful that KC could do nothing with it or else this city would have burned to the ground. Speaking of burning... Now again launches one, long for Diggs! Oh, and it went through his hands! Stefan, dude. You've been talking so much shit about how you need the ball in your hands. You get a missile delivered right to your breadbasket and you drop it! That's gonna get you a one-way ticket out of town, buddy. The fortunate thing is that the Bills don't move the ball with precision. There's plenty of time left, but they have to use as much of it as they can. The best defense against Mahomes is keeping the ball out of his hands. A third and ten at their own 43 is perilous, but it gets even more so. Josh Allen fucks the ball. Dalton Kincaid's quick thinking once again prevents most certain doom, fortunately, and the Bills escape their own incompetence. On the ensuing fourth down, certainly not incompetence by Khalil Shakir. It's a life-saving first down. Time slowly ticking away. The 
and the fire god slicing this defense all the way to field goal range. Yet there's a problem, trying to go for the home run ball when they were hitting singles and doubles. Two deep shots go awry and it forces the field goal to try to tie the game. Tyler Bass is money in these situations. And this is all but a chip shot for him with the wind at his back. The game on the line, he will. 44 yards, Bass. No, he doesn't make it! It happened again. More pain to go on top of the mountain of brutality. Tyler Bass got the yips at the worst possible time. His kick evading the Twin Towers and falling right in Shanksville. Scott Norwood has company, and this one was just a choke by fate itself. The life in Buffalo is gone, and the Chiefs bury them on the final drive because they're out of linebackers. They can't do it. They just can't do it. This was their best chance to overcome the demons, and they still found a way to cut themselves off at the knees. All the heroics of Josh Allen are for naught. Mahomes is simply better because his teams have found ways to win. Even when the Chiefs are the worst they've been in this era, Buffalo is the Yankees to their Kansas City Astros. Even worse, there's no scapegoat to blame this time. No coin, no Leslie Frazier, even the ref ball meant nothing in the end. They can only blame themselves. They just lost. And that might be the most brutal realization of them all. This is the kind of failure a team doesn't recover from. And with all the impending free agents for Buffalo, the questions and concerns this offseason, this might have been their last great shot. On the other side, the thrill of victory for Kansas City again. They're third against the Bills in four years. And they haven't missed the AFC Championship game under Mahomes. Every football season needs a villain. And the Chiefs are dubbed as such. It suits them well. They've earned this. And there's only one thing to say in the end. No one circles the wagons of futility like the Buffalo Bills.